All right, so we are going to do a quick introduction to coin word problems. Because I want you to be thinking about like coins just in general. All right, so the first question, I'm just telling you, you have three nickels, eight quarters, and 12 dimes. And then what I want you to do is write an expression to represent how many coins you have. So what I want is not the answer. I want what would you do to figure out how many coins you have. So this is not a trick question, right? If you have three nickels, eight quarters, and 12 dimes, well, the number of coins you have is going to be three plus eight plus 12, right? As simple as that. I'm not asking for the answer, OK? The next one, I want you to write an expression to represent how much money you have. So you have to think about this. If you have three nickels, well, you have to think about how much money that is. What are nickels worth? Well, nickels are worth five cents. So what I would need to do is multiply five cents times three to get 15. I don't want the answer. I would just want you to say, all right, I'm just going to do five times the number of coins that I have there, which is three. If you want it to, this would give it me the answer in cents. If I wanted the answer to be in dollars at the end, you would say 0.05 times three. Either is acceptable, all right? So now if I have eight quarters, well, that quarters are worth 25 cents. So then I'm just gonna add to that 25 times eight, right? If you do 25 times eight, that tells you how much money you have in quarters. You could also say 0.25 times eight. And then the last one, you have 12 dimes. Well, dimes are worth 10 cents. So you're going to do 10 times 12, and that's gonna give you how much money you have in dimes. If I wanna do it in dollars, it would be 0.10 or 0.1, times 12. All right, so now I'm not asking you to give me the answers to any of these things. I just want you to give me the expression. But I do want you to think about if I was finding out the answer to this top expression, my answer would be in cents. Meaning, like if I got 350 as an answer, that would mean 350 cents, which is $3.50. So it would be 3.50, the way that you write it. If I was doing this one, that would give me my answer with the decimal in the right spot. I personally like to work without decimals. So when I do mine, I typically do it without the decimals. But just keep in mind that you would, if you do it with the decimals, that is also correct. All right, so for this whole front side, I do not want you to give me answers to the questions. What I want are expressions to how you would figure it out. So take a moment, stop the video, see if you can complete the whole front side, and then tune back in, and I'll show you how I did mine. All right, so look at what I came up with here. Notice over on the right-hand side, I started just, I just started dropping my decimal points. I prefer to write my coin problems without decimal points. Here I said you could have 25x or 0.25x. For any of these, you just have to have one or the other. So for this one here, the one that says 25 times 2, if you put 0.25 times 2 plus 0.05 times 10, I would accept that as well. All right, but I'm going to be practicing taking out my decimal points and just thinking through that um, later. So the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is if I'm writing an expression to represent how many coins I have, what I'm doing is I'm just adding the coins that I have, the number of coins that I have, right? If I am then asking how much money I have, you have to notice you have to assign the value of the coin in your expression, right? However much the coin is worth has to get multiplied by how many coins you actually have, all right? So take a look at this one here where I just wrote x. If you wrote 1x here, that's fine. If you're doing the decimals, you would have written 0.01x, 10x or 0.1x and 0.25x there. All right, so just my biggest point that I'm trying to get across here is if I'm asking you how much money you have, you have to assign the value of the coin to the expression. So that's going to help us when we're writing equations. So go ahead and flip it to the back. So now we're going to start talking about writing equations. So this first question says that you have x dimes and y nickels and you have $2.50. 
All right, so the x dime stands for you have some number of dimes. Like you could have three dimes, you could have eight dimes, you could have a thousand dimes, right? You have y nickels, you could have one nickel, you could have eight nickels, you could have 32 nickels, right? It's the number of coins that you have. But the total that I'm given here is the amount of money I have, right? So it's important to understand what your total is, right? The total that I've been given is the amount of money. So now I want to write an equation, right? So my equation is going to equal how much money I have. So I'm not going to just do x plus y equals $2.50 because x doesn't stand for how much money I have. x dimes means I have a certain number of dimes, right? So if I have x dimes, that means I have 10 times x in money. So if I was calculating how much money it is, I would multiply it by 10. I'm going to take out the decimals. If you want to leave the decimals in, that's fine. But I'm going to do 10x. What that does is that's going to tell me how much money I have in dimes. And then I'm going to do 5y. 5y is going to tell me how much money I have in nickels, right? But now think about it. I didn't keep the decimal points in there. So it's not going to equal 2.50. It's going to equal 200. And 50 because I'm putting it in cents. 10 cents, 5 cents equals 250 cents, right? If you leave the decimal points in, it would look like this 0.1, you could say 0.1x, or you could say 0.10x. You don't need to put the zeros at the ends of your decimals. Plus 0.05y, that zero in front of the five is important, and then equals 2.5. When I work with these, I prefer not to deal with decimals, so you're going to see me take out the decimals. So in this particular problem, I had to assign value to my variable because my total was in the amount of money. Now the next question, the next question is a little bit different. It still says you have x dimes and y nickels, but now your total is 16 coins. So I have number of coins as my total, which is going to change the way that I write my equation. Because now if I just know I have 16 coins, well, all I have to do now is just x plus y equals 16. And that's it, right? You just add, I have x dimes plus y nickels equals 16 coins. So think about how that correlates to what we just did on the front, right? If, you're, if your total is in the number of coins, you just add the coins that you have together. If your total is in money, you have to multiply each expression by how much money you have. All right, let's try the next one together. So the next one says there are 27 coins in your purse. There are three more dimes than quarters. So this is kind of a comparison problem as well. So we need to think about this, all right? So you do know that you have 27 coins. So your total that you have is in the number of coins, right? So this is going to be number of coins. So now when I think through the equation, I have a comparison problem, so I have to say there are three more dimes than quarters. So dimes is being compared to quarters. So let's just say I'm calling quarters x, right? So the number of quarters I have is called x, and the number of dimes I have is 3 plus x, because I have three more than quarters. So I have x plus 3 as the number of dimes I have, right? So the x stands for the number of quarters plus the number of dimes, and we know that the total that I have is 27 coins. And if I solve for that equation, that's going to tell me how many quarters I have, right? Now the next one, same problem, except that I say there's $4.50 in your wallet, and there are three more dimes than quarters. So same thing, I still have three more dimes than quarters, except my total is in the amount of money. So since my total is in the amount of money, when I write my equation, I have to assign value to that part of your equation, right? So since x is the number of quarters, if I want to know how much money that is, I multiply that x by 25 because quarters are worth 25 cents. And the next one, x plus 3, is dimes. And since dimes is worth 10 cents, I'm going to multiply x plus 3 by 10. So I'm going to put the 10 in front of parentheses and write x plus 3. 
you're multiplying all of x plus 3 times 10. If you wanted to distribute the 10 and call that 10x plus 30, that's okay with me too. But now it equals not 4.5 because I took out the decimals. It's going to equal 450 cents, right? So that would be the equation I would use to solve for x here. Take a moment right now, stop the video, and try the next two on your own, and then tune back in to see if you've gotten them correct. All right, so these next two say that you have an equal number of nickels, dimes, and quarters, right? And the first one, because your total is in the amount of money, you have to multiply your variable by 5, by 10, and by 25. So you have to actually, the same number would mean you just have the same variable, right? And then that would be your equation. If you left your decimal points in, it would be 0.05x, 0.1x, 0.25x, and 1.6. If you went ahead and combined your like terms and called this 40x equals 160, I would accept that as well. Now the last one, since you don't have to assign value because the total is in the number of coins, you just add x plus x plus x, or you could say 3x equals 21. So this right here is going to help you really understand how to set up your um, coin problems. So go ahead and stop this and get started on the next paper.